Well, in this world of uh, morality and ethical values, we know that plays a very critical role in fostering a peaceful environment. Sustaining these values in recent times has become a general challenge for all, part uh, particularly for the keepers of home, religious and traditional leaders. For the advent of technology and the quest to belong to a global village, the task has become more daunting for all. Now, experts believe it is the lack of societal control and the needed push to uphold moral and ethical values, which is largely contributing to the threat to peace and security. So to deliberate on the way forward, maintaining the needed peace internationally, acclaimed Islamic clerics are converging um, at the maiden edition of the One Ummah Convention in Ghana this weekend to help us actually appreciate what's really the goal and expectations of this conference is. I've been joined in the studio by two renowned Muslim clerics, Sheikh Nuruddin Lemo uh, from Nigeria, and uh, I've also been joined by Sheikh Wa'il Ibrahim from Australia. Great to have you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Aisha. W why this conversation at this time? What has really triggered this? Well, uh, thank you for having us, first of all. We, uh, I personally have enjoyed my stay so far in Ghana, mashallah, tabarakallah, beautiful place. Uh, so it's been an effort that was going on in Nigeria for the past 10 years, I yes. think. And I've been part of the conventions in, uh, in Nigeria for a couple of times. And we saw the needs of the people whenever there is a call for peace and unity. We have actually witnessed that on ground. And mashallah, the brothers uh, came from Nigeria, the brothers and the sisters, and so many people from this part of the world came to Nigeria in the last conference. And they thought, you know what, let's bring the idea to Ghana because also there is a dire need for peace and unity in this part of the world. So mm. that's what triggered for the first time to come to Ghana. And I think it's not going to be the end, uh, the, the last time, inshallah. That's the beginning. Okay. Yeah, since we are about to taste the jaluf, is it? <laughs> oh, no, no, that, that's, uh, that's a different debate. debate it's altogether. setting, it's setting. I mean, Ghana Jalof is the best. That so one is I setting. Heard it's a very sensitive topic. They warned me. They told me, be careful. <laughs> it could cause war. Uh, uh, all right. So, Sheikh, I mean, we're talking about uh, morality, eth uh, ethics, and we're talking about peace and security. I mean, generally, how would you assess the, uh, the uh, security in Africa? I think as populations increase, um, what we are finding is governments are sometimes getting weaker. Um, things are becoming more expensive. Mm. We're having various challenges coming from the side of technology, social media, new cultural norms and trends. We've got climate change. We've got poverty increasing. We've got other countries seeing what they can make out of Africa. Okay. And unless we find ways of staying more united across our various divides, ethnic, religious, um, national, uh, we need to build bridges, see how to cooperate, get out of our comfort zones, uh, meet the unknown, mm. uh, have less fear of the unknown and see how we can emphasize our humanity. And hopefully that would create more partnerships, more networking that would help share experiences in better uh, values in society, but also contribute to greater peace and security. Okay, so so it's a Saturday and Sunday. Yes. What should uh, participants uh, expect from the so convention? The theme, the theme of the uh, convention this year is pathway to thrive, embracing uncertainty, and igniting growth and success. So. Participants will expect to hear from our uh, renowned scholars uh, a lot of uh, topics pertaining to success in this dunya, in this world. Mm. And the next being, it's uh, an Islamic conference, we will always touch on how to achieve success in the hereafter. My side in particular, I'm coming with a mission, of course. I'm flying all the way from Australia, from Perth in particular. I left home on Tuesday. I found myself landing on Thursday. What happened to Wednesday, God alone knows. Uh, so I came with a mission on mine to deliver the uh, idea of uh, breaking free from the chains of internet addiction. Mm. 
okay. especially pornography. That's my expertise. I wrote a couple of books on this. Okay. And I wanted to, uh, to bring to our Ghana uh, brothers and sisters the knowledge uh, that can save them from, you know, or can hinder their progress in the future. Hmm. Let, let's delve more into the theme. Okay. I'm, I'm much more interested how to be successful and also deal with uncertainties. Uh, maybe, Sheikh, you want to go more into that? Um, generally, you know, what we find is you can't give what you don't have. And so development has to take an inside-out approach. Okay. How can I be a better person? Then I can contribute more. Then I can see societies mm. improving. Mm. Um, you can't force people to like you, but you can be more likable. You yep. can't force people to respect you, but you can be more respectable. Yep. You can't get people to trust you if you are not more trustworthy. So this question of growth is one that, as human beings, and if you look at various religious institutions, Muslim, Christian, every religion, mm. there's this assumption that the human being never graduates from growing, from yeah. getting better. Mm -hmm. It's a struggle from the cradle to the grave. Yeah. And so part of the uh, mission of the One Ummah is to continue to remind people, Muslims and people of other faiths, to continue to grow, to continue to build bridges, and through those bridges, we become more effective at changing things within our circle of influence, starting with ourselves, of yeah. course, and family, then neighbors and communities, and we go global. Mm -hmm. So the interest is to get international speakers who have had experience with a lot of countries, a lot of contexts, to come with that to Ghana with people of Ghana, and we've got uh, contributions also from speakers in Ghana, mm. uh, men and women, who will be presenting those perspectives that also enlighten those from outside, but mm. allow people to see what applies best to their own mm. situation. Mm. And, and more about the advent of technology, and I'm happy you said that is your area, Sheikh Ibrahim. Yes. Um, we know that um, internet presents to us a lot of opportunities, but also a lot of negative mm. Mm. Um, stuff. So how do we make that choice? I mean, um, at this convention, are you going to help us to deal with that uncertainty that comes with this technology? Absolutely. And also we will raise awareness about the harmful impact. If you don't know the danger of what you're doing, yep. you will keep doing it without knowing the consequences. Yep. So uh, I, I believe, first of all, is raising awareness. And that's why we are here mm -hmm. to bring about this message to the people of Ghana and to warn them that if you delve into this again and again, mm -hmm. you will end up never you know, achieving what you wanted to achieve in life. Uh, regarding uncertainty, it could be also not necessarily related to technology. It could be life challenges of any, of any sort that can happen all of a sudden. I myself experienced a massive slip disc on my back oh. that pinned me to the ground for a year on a wheelchair. Okay. And I, I didn't know what to do. Uh, these, these uncertainties that we face in life, how can we thrive in the middle of all that pain? Yeah. This is uh, our main focus, inshallah, to mm. bring to the people in Shalaf Ghana. Mm. Uh, that's quite interesting, but particularly young people. Um, I want to know who are the speakers at this conference? So we have uh, renowned speaker Mufti Ismail Mink from Zimbabwe. We have Dr. Muhammad Salah from uh, Egypt, myself from Australia, Sheikh Noor Din, and okay. also Dr. Nail from uh, Ghana. Most oh, well. It certainly will be a big conference, I mean, from the names I'm hearing. But I know we have a conversation backstage, but I just, for the sake of my viewers, why Ghana? Jalof, we say. And why not? Uh, sometimes in Nigeria, it gets boring, the same Jalof. So coming here, uh, it's our closest English-speaking neighboring country. Yeah. It is a country that has sent quite a number of respected individuals to attend the One Oma conventions we've had in Nigeria. And they then said, you know, how could this happen in Ghana? So we're bringing it here for the first time. Mufti Menk and uh, Sheikh Salah would also be going to Kumasi mm. uh, for presentations on Sunday morning. Um, so yeah, it's the first we're starting here. We hope to build these bridges. Um, South Africa has expressed interest in organizing a One Oma convention there. Kenya has expressed interest, uh, a number of others. And you know what we find is we do it in Nigeria. People from Kenya um, 
Ghana, South Africa attend, then these ones want it. Hopefully when we have it here, we will get others from Liberia, Sierra Leone, and gradually spread peace building across the nation, across the continent, and hopefully beyond that. And this is something also not, not only focused on the Muslims of Ghana. So okay. I think non-Muslim community can benefit loads okay. of what we're going to present. It's not just particularly for people of faith mm. or the, the, the Muslim faith. In okay, sense. so it's open to it's all. Absolutely, yeah. everyone is welcome. Yeah, and, and that leads me to my next question about coexistence. We know this, is, uh, this whole thing is about morality, it's about ethics, it's about peace and security. There can never be peace and security if we cannot coexist. And of course, we know in Nigeria, in Ghana, in other countries, we have different beliefs, different faiths. I mean, how in, in Ghana, I think we've done it quite well. I don't know about Nigeria. I don't know about Australia. But we, we've done quite well. How do we actually learn from other, um, you know, environments or other jurisdictions to better how we coexist with our, uh, our brothers in, I mean, Christian brothers, others in other faiths? Um, I, think, I think coexistence uh, misunderstood, misunderstood to be like, I, I coexist and agree with you in everything you do or say or... So yeah. we can still coexist while we are different. We can yeah. still coexist while we debate respectfully our viewpoints. Yeah. I am uh, an Egyptian, born mm -hmm. Egyptian, living in Australia currently. My wife is from the Philippines. Okay. We have two completely different cultures. Yeah. Our food taste is completely diff mm -hmm. yeah, different. <laughs> uh, at least you guys, Nigerians and Ghanas, they have jalo. Something in common. <laughs> like, the word is the same, but <laughs> Philippines and Egypt is completely the opposite. Yet yeah. we coexisted despite our differences. And yeah. that's, that's the quality. Uh, that Islam brought to, to, to the world. That lakum dinukum wa diyadin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, to you is your way of life and to me is mine. Yeah. Just let me practice what I believe to be the path to Jannah, to success, to paradise. Yeah. And I will let you do the same thing. Yeah. So long as we treat each other with respect yeah. and we, we don't try to bash each other's faith and bash each other's culture and uh, and and that's, I, I think that's the, the very basic definition of coexisting together peacefully. Mm. Sheikh? I think, um, you know, you could look at it firstly from a religious point of view. Um, a line the Quran describes is having created our diversity, male, female, nations, tribes. And he says, that you get to know each other better. Mm -hmm. In other words, we should actively be curious, uh, but also share what God has given us, our cultural differences, because as we notice, the greatest innovation comes from where there's diversity. Yeah. You know, the next invention is going to come from somebody outside the field Definitely. who has had the opportunity of, you know, thinking out of that box. Mm -hmm. um, but what we find is, as human beings, um, you look at your relationship. I have uh, two dogs yep. uh, at home, and um, fine. They do a good job of security. They welcome me when I come back home from office or from mm -hmm. travel. Mm -hmm. We don't really share the same religion. We don't share the same <laughs> political thoughts. Yeah. We don't have the same tastes. Yeah. But we have an awesome relationship. Mm -hmm. Like if we can have relationships with pets, mm -hmm. then how could we be so different and fight over things as human beings? Definitely Nigeria has had its own fair share of ethnic, religious, uh, all sorts of tensions from people of various professions. Um, but we also have learned how those mistakes took place. We have seen where some things have worked and we have lessons. Fortunately, it's not the whole country uh, on fire. We have spots of places that have retained peace, not affected by Boko Haram, not affected by uh, intertribal, interethnic uh, uh, tensions and a lot of lessons for other parts of Nigeria but also other parts of the world mm -hmm. and we find a lot of interest in how Nigeria is handling its own peace building, what has succeeded, what has worked, not worked and it becomes lessons for humanity. So in that sense, while unfortunate, um, it has allowed us to study uh, that part of human nature in that context and see what we can benefit others with. Before I allow you to go, um, there's been conversations about jihad is, um, and you talk about Boko Haram and all of these insurgencies, uh, terrorism and all of that. Um, in most of the conversations, sometimes people mistakenly um, um, actually talk about um, Muslims 
involved in this and they, they just misinterpret the whole uh, situation and think that it is the Quran that is actually asking people to fight. I know that is not the case. I, I just want you to explain to, I mean, for the sake of my viewers, I mean, how can we actually deal with this as a situation that confronts us and actually separating it from religion? I think if we look at the history of every society and of every religion, it's just how far back into the past you want to go. There's always a time where people use religion to justify taking power and forcing others on their own interpretation. Yeah. Every religion has it. Uh, and it comes and it goes. So it's actually, it's unfortunately, it's not new. Um, when you don't know what a good dollar bill looks like, um, it's difficult to identify the fake. And sometimes what happens is a society becomes very illiterate about its own religion. That somebody who is charismatic, who touches the grievances of people, can wrap religion and package it in such a way that it looks beautiful. You know, we talk of false prophets, we talk of the wolf in sheep's clothing. We, this is part of what, you know, human beings are used to, unfortunately. But what we find is within the Muslim community, you have those Muslims who have grievances. And what we find also about terrorism uh, and violent extremism is um, ideology alone without grievance doesn't produce movement. Yep. What they think they are doing is a liberation theology. Mm -hmm. But what we find is innocent people being killed in the name of a religion that is teaching peace. And our responsibility as religious leaders is to vaccinate, yep. if I use that term, mm -hmm. um, the community so that they are not recruited, mm -hmm. they don't support it, yep. and they can quickly identify it mm -hmm. and you know, call it out for what it is. Mm -hmm. And gradually we find these dying a natural death until mm. God knows how many years later when mm. people become ignorant again, then it comes back again, unfortunately. Thank you, Brian. Just to, to answer the question briefly about the Quran yeah. part, because uh, you have to be very clear to, when it comes to those issues. So, yes, there are verses in the Quran that talks about fighting and killing. We have to be very clear yeah. and educate the, the yeah. masses. Mm. Because uh, our religion, Islam, is a complete way of life. Yeah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided the believers on how to live in this life yeah. in every aspect of their existence, including when wars, you know, are waged. Confront us. Yes, so how, how to behave in those wars. Yeah. So we have rules mm. of how to actually combat with the enemies when they strike. Yeah. But those, those verses are often quoted out of context. Yeah. Like there is an ayah in the Quran, there is a verse in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to those people in the battlefield at that time mm -hmm. and kill the disbelievers wherever you find them. Okay. Like imagine if you take that verse now and go down the streets of Ghana and start killing finding just non-believers or non-Muslims and start just... But if you continue the ayah, and this by the way, like a one part of a very long ayah, okay. very long verse. Mm -hmm. And then Allah said, but uh, kill the believer wherever you find them, but never transgress the bounds, never transgress limits. And if they stop fighting you, you must also stop, stop fighting, fighting them. Not only that, but escort them to a place of security. Yep. Secure them because they said, okay, peace. Yep. So whoever, that's in the war battle context. Mm. So it's an invitation to those people uh, we were discussing yesterday with the ulama and they mentioned a quote by Imam Abu Hanifa that whosoever uh, uh, teacher is a book just yeah. you're reading on your own mm. without going back to scholars and mashayikh yeah. that reading would be your path to misguidance. Yeah. So you have to go back to scholars those who studied the deen from A to Z to give you the right historical context to mm. understand what's mm. written. Mm. And this convention certainly is something that all of us must be uh, must take opportunity to actually understand some of these things because I, I see that it's deep and if you look at the speakers it's going to be quite an interesting one. So it's when? Saturday, Sunday? This weekend, Saturday, Sunday from it's 9 It's two days. All the way to 5, 6 p.m. I think. It's a full packed event. There will be breakout sessions um, parallel going through from a big, the big main venue to uh, workshops on the side uh, events for teenagers as well, Sheikh. Yes. Uh, and, uh, Men, women, uh, children. Q &A, panel discussion. So Muslims and non-Muslims alike are welcome to attend. Mm. 
Right, so we'll be looking forward to that convention. I'll try and be there myself. Thank you so much for passing by. Sheikh Nurdin Lemu is an international scholar from Nigeria, and Sheikh Wail Ibrahim, who is from Australia, actually my father. Thank you so much Thank you for, for coming.